I guess the first thing that we need to understand is that when we talk about uh, Chennai city and the quality of living is that we talk a lot about how much Chennai has developed and there is a core problem with that statement in that Chennai has not developed, there is a lot of construction. People seem to misunderstand the difference between construction and development. Development is holistic. It takes into account both urban planning, infrastructure, transportation, public welfare. If you consider the number one problem that we are facing right now, because we are a metropolis, is transportation. And with so many ideas that keep coming up, make one way is this way, that way, why is it that we aren't looking at what Chennai is already blessed with, which is we have a fantastic natural resource, which is our rivers. We have the Kuom River, we have the Adia River, and we also have the Buckingham Canal, which runs north to south. And the British, in their wisdom, a hundred years ago, had already put in ferry stops. Why is it that we can't look at reviving ferries? Because we don't have to build anything from scratch. We just need to put in pontoons, bring in the boats, and we have a ferry system. And that's going to easily take at least 10 to 15 percent of the load of our roads. And that's what we want. Because essentially, the way we drive, it doesn't matter if you build a hundred roads, we will jam them all up because that's the way we drive. So we need to have a ferry system. We need to have dedicated bus lanes, which are only for your buses, for your share autos, any sort of MPV where, you're, where a lot of people are being carried, and for your emergency service systems, your ambulances, your, your uh, police, your fire tenders. How often do we hear that the fire tender gets there two hours too late? Why is that? Because there's no place to drive. People don't have the civic sense to let a fire tender through or an ambulance through. We need to have dedicated bus lanes, which would also serve as emergency vehicle lanes. We need to have an integrated travel system, like any other metropolis in the world, whether it is New York, whether it is London, whether it is Tokyo or Sydney. You have to have an integrated system between your bus, your train, your metro and your ferry, so that people have options they mom the moment they get off from one public transport system to move on to the next. And we, as a young economic powerhouse nation, we are still not keen to give up our comforts of our cars, our MPVs, and it's not easy to convince executives to take public transport, because public transport is still looked at as a poor man's option. So we need to create multi-level car parks, each one within a 5 to 8 or 10 kilometer radius at certain nodal points around the city, so that people can drive their vehicles and then pick up uh, either a bus or a train or a ferry and get to their destinations. And in the larger scheme of things, China is growing. And Yes, we can't grow much towards the north because there's a lot of industry, industrial pollution, but we're moving towards the south, we're moving towards the southwest and to the west. But we need to ensure self-sufficient suburbs. Every suburb that keeps coming up needs to have its own hospitals, its own grocery supermarkets, cinemas, emergency services, sporting facilities, even as simple as playgrounds. And they, has, they have to have a mix of residential, retail, commercial and public space. If you take, for example, Ananagar is one example of how an idea that was put in about 35 years ago has come to fruition today. People from Ananagar don't need to leave Ananagar, whether it is for entertainment, whether it is for shopping, whether it is for their health. So Ananagar is a self-contained suburb and that's exactly what we need around Chennai. And if you consider the uh, problems that we have with conservation, with the, ac the absolute rampant uh, urbanization that's taking place that is uncontrolled. We need to look at reclamation, places like Palikarnai Marsh. Which other city in the world can boast having thousands of birds from Siberian cranes to flamingos in your own city free of charge? You don't need to go to a zoo, you don't need to, to, uh, to take a day a day's drive or a day's hike, it's right here in Velachery. But we don't care about it. What we do is we dump garbage there. 
we need to seriously look at Palikhadnai Marsh, reclamation, create, recreate wetland habitats. And in the north, for Enor, no one talks about Enor anymore. And it's got the same problems that Palikarne has. And renewal. We are a metropolis, but probably the youngest metropolis out of all in India, because we are just 350 years old. But the history that is part of our heritage here is fast disappearing. There is no Heritage Act. For some reason, we are afraid to embrace the last 350 years of our heritage as part of our heritage. Why don't uh, other countries like Brazil or Colombia, who've also had colonial past, embrace them? Or South Africa? Or Singapore? So why is it that we can't look at other examples uh, from overseas? And we have so many buildings in and around First Line Beach, Second Line Beach, that used to be warehouses. And why can't those places be refurbished? Why can't they be leased out? Art galleries, restaurants, cafes, but under a strict heritage act that people can't change these buildings. Why is it that we are afraid to embrace our heritage? This is done all over the world, where all buildings are given a new lease of life. There's a strict set of laws that are put into place that you can't change certain details, and we can do the same. If you take places like Marina Beach, the great melting pot of Chennai city, the great melting pot, but also Chennai's biggest toilet, nobody cares about public conveniences to be constructed. Why is it that we are a 6,000 year old culture that refuses to use toilets? If we, everything else is a, is a cultural, uh, is, is about culture, is about tradition, then why is it that we are afraid to embrace construction of toilets for our people? How do we expect people to enjoy public spaces if we don't give them the facilities to do so? There is nothing that stops Chennai from being a metropolis of the 21st century. It is only willpower. It is the need for people to open their eyes and to take bold decisions. We don't need fantastic roads that are winding their ways between buildings, elevated skyways. No, we don't need that. We need people to understand the simplicity of the decisions that need to be taken to make the best out of the topography that we have of our natural resources. and. I don't think it is far-fetched to say that if we want to change Chennai into a 21st century metropolis, that it can't be done overnight.